Scam bodies, you know, we can kind of browse, you know, blow through this pretty quickly. Scam bodies essentially is a refresher. Scam body is just some object that has an association in, in what's called a digital library. So once you once you have a scam body, you have to restore kind of with that brand's parts. So you know, if you're doing DES and you like DES parts, you're doing a DES tie base or the DES scan body, you're kind of staying in that family on the restorative side. Um, all, we're, all it's doing here, it's referencing, this lab is saying, okay, here's this, you know, let's say this is a DES scan body. There's the library and there's like the tie base that's locked in with that scan body. And so the, the software like Exocat has this reference. So the software, they just bring the scan body in close to whatever gets scanned, and then the software then will do the rest as it hits best fit matching, and it's going to like lock in that your scan with the digital file. Now it knows where the tie base is. So there's your tie base down there, and then you can go and design custom abutments and whatnot. So that's kind of from the lab's perspective on a scan body and what they see. So they need to see enough markers on your scan that they can take that digital library of the scan body and line them up and match them up. And then the software knows where the platform is, the tie base is. So then we can, then the labs, they can you know, use that data to make all kinds of stuff. Bars, custom abutments. Um, we can talk, so here's how they make custom abutments too. This is, I thought this was interesting is that these are called pre-mill blanks. It's essentially a big block of titanium right here. And then the end is already pre-manufactured pre with the connection for the implant in. So like the manufacturers will actually have these blanks with a connection and then just a big block of titanium and it goes into the mill and that's how they can make custom abutments. I always thought that was interesting because I always thought they were milling out the connection at the same time. Usually the connection's already on there. Um, this is Des's scan body. This is the scan body we, you know, we use quite a bit. We like this one, we've used it a lot. It's got, um, it's got, you gotta get this little driver for it because it's got a finger tightener here at the end. So this little, on the top part here, you can finger tighten it, but sometimes you need a driver to get in between different teeth. So it does, if you are gonna use this scan body, get this driver to go with it. Um, so. I know, I know, I don't know why they didn't do that. Um, this is kind of going back to our S-shaped curve and talking about how, you know, when you're training your when you're training your labs to help think about, you know, if you're taking a scan body and you're taking a, a final scan and you're taking an X-ray, you know, take a picture of it, send it to your lab, and you know, draw out that S-curve. Really show them and, and train them repetition to get them to know like how to do that. Because before, like I was saying, they'd always used to just do this, right? Just like a big fast emergence. And then you don't get that zero bone loss concept um, as Dr. B was talking about. So this is what it typically looks like. Now, this is, um, you know, the other thing that you can do too is, you know, we talked about training the tissue with a profile generator. Well, let's just say you didn't. You know, I was lazy on this one and I put a little small healing abutment on it. So now I've just got this little tiny, this little tiny cylinder. Now for the tissue, you know, the lab would have to really come up to the top and then out quickly if they followed the gingiva. Um, you or your lab can um, actually design it. Um, if you skip that, notice how like I took this file and I'm actually bulking out and creating my own emergence profile on this tissue here. And I'm just kind of broadening it out myself on the file and you're just manipulating the gingiva where you want. Now you could tell your lab to do this or you could control the process so that you, you know, you train them. Hey, I want it to look like this. Now the difference is obviously at delivery, you've got to give them a little bit of local and then you can actually just do like a, take a 15 and just split, you know, split right down here in the middle. Maybe you release it just a little bit if it's too tight and then just screw it right down and it's going to push the tissue out of the way. So, they don't have to be stuck with that one emergence. This is kind of a bailout trick if you didn't shape it, but you want a better, wider molar emergence. Um, so you can just tell your lab, hey, modify the gingiva, you know, make an ideal molar shape. Don't worry about the scan, just worry about the good emergence. And then you split the tissue and let the tissue adapt to it. Because when it goes out and you're, you split the tissue, the tissue is just gonna go out and you're gonna have 
you know, essentially almost more than you begin with. Does everyone understand that concept? Yeah. So you don't, I mean, this isn't like workflow that you do all the time, but occasionally it's just like, hey, I want it to be better and I didn't, I didn't shape it and cut, you know, kind of cut, cut a corner a little bit. Mm -hmm.